my name is neeraj upadhyay and i will be talking about reader writer sima force and uh, the basic implementation and then per cpu rwsm and then some of the problems with the implementations like you have reader scalability issues and for per cpu rwsm you have the writer performance issue so we'll go through those and see some of the ways to avoid those issues for per cpu rwsm so let's start with the rwsm the global counter one so quick introduction uh, rwsm uh, is is a sleep uh, lock where the critical sections can sleep and you can have concurrent readers which are in critical section at the same time but there can be only a single writer so and the rwsm works best in cases where you have multiple reader contexts and uh, the number of writer contexts are less so otherwise you can use a mutex now this is the basic sima4 metadata for a 64 bit machine so the sima4 is a 64 bit uh, metadata which is divided into multiple subfields so there is a bit 0 which captures whether a writer is within the critical section and then bit 1 captures if there are any waiters in the queue the lock contenders and there is a bit called handoff which captures whether we want to avoid or delay some of the optimizations which can violate the fifo order so this can happen let's say there is optimistic lock stealing which happens when writer takes a optimistic spin path then you have a set of bit bits for from 8 to 63 which captures your number of readers and then you have a wait queue which maintains a queue of all the waiters which are contending for the lock so let's take a simple example of uh, the flow so you have an initial state where all the bits are zero and that the lock is in unlocked state now first reader arrives it sees that the lock is in unlocked state it changes the count to 1 and enters the critical section similarly the second reader when it arrives it sees that there is a reader but because it can enter that critical section at the same time uh, it increments the reader count and enters into the critical section now when a writer arrives uh, it sees that there are active readers so it has it adds it itself to the wait queue and uh, updates the waiter bit then when the third reader arrives because there are waiters in the queue it cannot run in parallel with the other readers which are already in the critical section and it adds it also adds it itself to the wait queue now same for the next reader now when the first two readers leave the critical section they wake the writer and uh, and then what happens is writer uh, writer updates the writer bit to tell that it is within the critical section and it is removed from the queue also because there are some readers in the queue the waiter bit is still set now when writer exits the critical section uh, it can wake up both the readers and uh, and the wait waiter bit becomes zero because now there are no entries in the wait queue so this is basic flow of uh, reader writer sima4 now let's see some of the metadata which uh, rwsm maintains uh, so there is a field called owner and uh, owner is owner basically captures the task struct of the current uh, owner of the lock so for the writer threads it is the writer task which is within the critical section and for readers basically it captures the last reader which did a, a down read operation so it is not accurate but uh, at least some information for debugging uh, which all readers entered the crit entered the critical section now there are other metadata fields like uh, flags like read owned which captures whether the lock is currently owned by a reader or it is owned by a writer thread and uh, then there are flags like non spinable which is used by reader thread which is within the critical section to notify the optimistic spinning waiter to exit that uh, spin because uh, the readers are taking long time to exit their critical section so instead of spinning you can go to a sleep state now there is a flag called lock handoff as i was saying uh, it is used to disable the optimizations of lock stealing 
and I will give an example where this lock stealing can happen. So let's see this example. So the initial state here is uh, there is a writer thread which is within the critical section and there are two readers which are waiting for the lock. In the second step if you see uh, the writer, writer leaves the critical section and it can wake up the readers. So what it does is it uh, increments the uh, read count but when it increments the read count it sees that the writer bit is set. So what happened here, here was a writer, a writer task came in and it could register its presence before these reader, reader count was incremented. So then this, this writer which is waking up the readers, it has to go, it has to decrement the count again because writer mark, the next writer marked its presence before it could increment the read count. So this led to your reader not readers not being able to enter the critical section and uh, uh, basically you violated or uh, violated the FIFA order. In this case, if this scenario happens for let's say a particular time of duration, then to let these readers make forward progress, uh, this hand handoff bit is set so that when the next writer arrives, it is not able to set the writer bit. So to disable that uh, uh, stealing, uh, this bit is set. Now let's see optimistic spinning which is done by writer threads. Now the idea here is uh, let's say you have a lock owner which is within the critical section but uh, and it is currently running on a CPU. So in this case what you want to do is uh, instead of going to a schedule and sleep to avoid context switch there is a p period where you can or the writer thread can actually spin waiting for the lock to be released and uh, avoid the cost of uh, full context switch. So this spinning is done by writer threads and uh, now when they spin they wait for certain conditions to happen. One is if the owner leaves the CPU and uh, it is not running on CPU then optimistic spin is exited and if there is a high priority task on the same CPU where this lock waiter is running spinning then also it is exited. Then similarly for uh, if the lock is currently owned by readers then in that case if readers do not leave the critical section for a long time uh, the spinning is uh, also exited in that case. Now this shows optimistic spinning so it uses a OSQ optimistic spin queue and it is a MCS lock. What happens here is uh, a writer comes in it disables preemption and tries to acquire the OSQ lock. And OSQ lock basically work, works on the local cache line so that you don't have cache pollution because of all CPUs trying to look at the same cache line and see if the lock is locked or not. So each CPU here, they so this is the owner CPU of owner of the lock and uh, then there are other CPUs which are waiting for the spinning or the first one to release the lock. So they wait on their local cache line and uh, the previous thread actually wakes them up by updating the cache line of uh, the, their local cache line, I mean the CPU2's cache line. And the conditions on which they wait are, uh, they wait on their node to be unlocked which is done by the previous node and if there is a high priority task on the on their CPU, let's say CPU3 has a high priority task, then we, we should not, we should come out of this disabled region. And if in case of virtualize, virtualization you have, if the previous node is preempted previous vCPU then uh, uh, that can delay your uh, your code section so you just come out of OSQ lock. Now the owner of the lock uh, waits for the current this is the OSQ lock so the original RWSM to which this OSQ lock belongs it waits for the owner of that SEMA4 to uh, if it is on CPU it can spin otherwise it comes out otherwise it tries to take a write lock on on the SEMA4 and uh, if it is able to successfully mark its presence and there are no other contenders like readers and other threads then it can enter the critical section without going to a full sleep. Now let's see uh, the reader flow. Uh, so readers start with a down read operation. So this is the lock operation for SEMA4 and they try to do a try lock first. So this try lock operation updates the reader count. So reader bias is the 
one shifted by the start of the reader bits and then they check the old count and if the old count says that the lock is successfully acquired they mark the uh, lock as read owned and enter the critical section otherwise the trial lock failure enters into slow path where readers wait for their turn to be woken up when the lock is released now this is the trial lock flow uh, so in the trial lock the conditions on which the trial lock failure is determined is uh, if there is a writer bit set that means a writer thread has registered its presence before this reader code so that writer will enter the critical section so this trial lock fails here and uh, then if there is a waiter bit set that means there are waiters in the queue then also the trial lock fails hand off bit again to not allow uh, if there are waiters in the queue then not allow the optimization to skip those waiters that hand off bit is set then again the failure again the trial lock fails and if there is a read count overflow which is unlikely but uh, uh, then also the trial lock fails otherwise the trial lock succeeds and there is a read on bit set now this is the slow path of the readers so readers start with so the readers have optimization that uh, if it is the first reader which is entering the critical section it can actually steal the lock what it means is basically let's say you have a queue of waiters and uh, the first waiter is not a writer then in that case you are uh, you are this reader who is the first reader who is going to enter the critical section that can wake up the readers out of order only condition is that the first waiter should not be a writer so if let's say you have a reader 1 in the queue then writer and then reader 2 so both reader 1 and reader 2 can be woken up out of order while writer 1 is waiting in the queue so this lock stealing is done by the first reader which enters the critical section to avoid lot of stealing or starvation of writer threads uh, this check is done only on the first uh, first reader now this is how lock stealing works that uh, yeah as i as i told uh, if if the writer and handoff are not set that means your reader can enter the critical section and it sets the read own bit and uh, then if first waiter is not writer then it can wake up any sequence of readers out of order in the queue and uh, then uh, add the reader count based on the number of readers which are actually woken up so if 10 readers are woken up the count is incremented by 10 and added to the current reader count in the lock metadata now the, these are the set of queue operations which are done by the reader let's say it is not able to acquire the lock so it has to add itself to the wait queue and uh, the operations are first it takes the wait lock and uh, see if the wait lock is wait queue is empty if it is empty that means uh, it has to mark the waiter bit also so the waiter bit is set and there are certain optimizations if let's say the writer bit is not set then it can directly enter the critical section uh, instead of going to the full queue path and uh, then if if it was the first waiter it sets the wait bit and enters into the same place where the second waiters actually add themselves to the wait queue now because in the trial lock path you had done a fetch add so that count has to be decremented and that is done by this stage then there can be conditions where let's say the current owner actually leaves the lock but uh, this waiter is in the process of adding itself so to avoid those races because this thread is running with the waiter wait lock held it tries to wake up waiters in the queue so handling those cases is done by this conditional wake waiters we'll see what it does then the wait lock is released and it enters into the wait loop waiting for its turn to actually be woken up and enter the critical section so this is the condition wake waiter and uh, what happens here is uh, while the wait lock is held it tries to see if writer bit is set if it is set then that means there is a writer so there is no chance to wake up any other lock waiters it it cannot wake uh, any other thread now if the reader bit is set and there are readers in the queue then uh, if it is set then it, it can wake up other readers which are in the queue otherwise uh, 
it so this this is like if reader bit is not set that means uh, the the this is not the current owner and it has to actually it it has to wake up any thread in that case it can be either a writer or a set of readers so there is a mark wake function which what it does is uh, it goes through the current set of waiters in the queue and wake them up depending on the whether they are waiters or readers uh, and the type of the wake which is done so this is how wake uh, mark wake looks like so basically what you are doing is you are adding uh, a set of waiters into a wake queue and uh, then later on those set of waiters will be woken up now this wake path uh, is called with various type of wakes which are done so first is uh, whether it wants to wake up any thread which will happen let's say the current owner is releasing the lock so it can wake up either a writer or a reader so that is like wake any uh, type of wake up then second wake up is read owned which means that uh, the current thread owns the lock and uh, it can directly wake up other readers and then the third case is when the lock is not owned by the current thread not read owned and it tries to wake up readers so first path is for any waiter and second and third path are for waking up readers now why second and third case are different we will go through that uh, so first case is when the wake type is any and uh, and then if uh, the first writer first let's say the first waiter is a writer so in in that case you can only wake up when the type is any if the first is not a writer then if the lock is read owned then it's okay you can just go through the queue and uh, wake up uh, add all the readers into waiting readers into the wake queue and once you have added those you also increment the count reader count with the number of waiters which have been woken up so and because the queue has moved the first waiting entry in the queue has moved you remove the handoff bit and uh, then this uh, once the readers are added to the wake queue uh, there is a each waiter has a task uh, task pointer where which is used for waiting when they add themselves to the wake queue so uh, basically that pointer is set to null so that to mark to flag those waiters that you can now enter into critical section now if the lock is not read owned that means the current thread is not the owner of the lock uh, it has to make sure that it is able to register the its presence before let's say a writer comes in and uh, and takes the lock before this uh, registration is done so what it does is uh, it sets one reader count and then checks what is the state of the lock if the state of the lock says that a writer bit is present that means the lock has been stolen but if it is not stolen then it can follow the same path as the read on read on flow so it has to do a prior check so that it can do early exit if there are any preemptions due to other writers coming while these operations are happening now this is the wait loop where uh, as i was saying the waiters wait for their task pointer to be set to null and go to schedule and uh, if if the task is woken up from schedule then it can it can it checks for the waiter task is null and then enters into the critical section and removes removes itself from the wait queue so basically the counting operation has been already done by the mark wake uh, side of things where the waker or the lock owner when releases the lock it uh, increments the count before waking up the waiting contenders so the up path looks like this you have uh, first you clear the read so this is for the readers where it clears the read on bit and then the bias count which is the count of the reader uh, so it is decremented by 1 and then uh, if the semaphore is currently unlocked uh, it means that the reader bits are not set and writer bit is also not set and there are and the waiter bit is set that means uh, the lock is free right now and there are waiters in the queue so it it tries to wake up any reader with the wake type of any that means wake up any reader which is at the head of the queue so the mark wake follows the same flow as uh, the previous flow 
then the once the mark wake up is marked then the all those waiters are woken up after releasing the weight log now this is the writer side of things uh, so in the writer side uh, writers do a down write to acquire the log and uh, the initial operation is try log where they the old count is zero which is the unlocked state and uh, they try to in, add the right bit writer bit if if this is successful then uh, writer marks itself as the owner and uh, returns otherwise uh, the slow path starts with a uh, spin on owner optimistic spinning where it checks whether your optimistic spinning conditions if they are satisfied that is if the owner is running on cpu and the current cpu where this log contender is running does not have a higher priority task then it can go to optimistic spinning if optimistic spinning passes then take the log mark the owner as yourself otherwise go to the wait waitlist and uh, uh once woken up from the waitlist try to acquire the right log so this is a slow path for the writer now optimistic spin conditions as i was saying uh, so can this writer thread spin on the current log owner so it can so these are the conditions where it cannot so if the need reset is set on the cpu then you cannot spin with preemption disabled if in the owner flags if non spinable bit is set and this bit is set by when you have waited for long enough that and reader and the lock owner is currently the reader and they are i mean let's say you have a large number of readers which are in critical section and they haven't released the lock for 1 milliseconds then uh, this flag will be set to mark uh, optimistic spin exit and if the owner is the writer because in only in case of writer we have correct information about uh, what is the owner ta current owner task in case of readers it is only for information so only if the owner is a writer and that is not running on cpu then you exit the uh, optimistic spinning so this is the flow of optimistic spinning so it uh, starts with taking the osq lock uh, and uh, if the thread is able to take the osq lock uh, it it repeats a loop where it checks whether the spinning conditions are still okay or they still give true and uh, within within that loop what they do is they try to or the thread the current osq lock owner tries to acquire the lock by setting the right bit if it is able to set the right bit and there are no other lock contenders it can enter the critical section otherwise uh, uh, it again uh, returns from the osq lock and uh, enters into the slow path so there are certain scenarios where the non spinable bit is set like i was saying there if the spinning has crossed the threshold time and then there are certain conditions for rt live lock where let's say uh, the spinning thread is a rt thread and the current owner is running on the same cpu so if it is spinning it won't give chance to the lock owner to actually complete its critical section and uh, then the lock to be freed now this is the this is a bit uh, again busy diagram where uh, which shows writer flow and uh, what happens is writer takes the wait lock and adds itself to the wait list if it is the first waiter it has to increment the wait count otherwise uh, it it has to again it does a conditional wake of waiters because it has the correct state or the most accurate state of the wait queue as it is running with wait lock held now in if if the thread is waiting for the lock uh, and it has done a schedule once it is woken up it tries to take there is a loop where it tries to take the right lock if the right lock uh, succeeds that means this writer has set the writer bit then it is able to enter the critical section otherwise uh, uh, it again goes to the schedule portion and there are other checks which happen when uh, let's say the thread which is doing this uh, right lock wait is actually uh, signaled and in that case it has to leave the wait queue delete itself from the wait queue and wake up any waiters which could be after it in the queue 
if the lock is free okay so done with the uh, read write semaphore uh, now let's see per cp read write semaphore and uh, the basic advantage here we'll see that uh, readers are uh, optimized here they have a fast path where they do not need to take any do any atomic operation so let's see the reader flow what happens here is in the per cpu uh, the reader does a disable preemption and then it checks for a state machine which says that rc which is rc sync and which says if it is idle if it is idle means there are no currently active writers which are waiting for the same block so these if it is idle that means uh, this read thread or a reader thread can directly enter the critical section by incrementing incrementing the local cpu read count and uh, if let's say the sync idle returns false then it has to go to a slow path and the slow path what happens is it does an increment of the local read counter but it has to check also the state of the writers if the writers have set out set the block bit or a block flag uh, then it cannot enter the critical section because the writer uh, writer will acquire the lock so in that in that case it decrements the local counter and uh, enters into the wait queue and the flow is same that uh, when it is broken up it tries to acquire the lock and if it is able to it can enter the critical section otherwise it uh, again loops in the same or schedules out in the same wait loop so basically here what happens is the readers in the fast path case if the writer is not present can in add enter into critical section with a just a local uh, counter increment in a uh, up path uh, if the log, if the sync machine says that there are no writers it can just do a decrement otherwise it has to wake up the writers and in the writer flow uh, so in the writer flow first they do a rcu sync enter so to mark the sync state machine as non idle so once this state machine is marked as non idle so this rcu sync enter can only return after a grace period rcu grace period and at that point all cpus would have all readers would have observed that the state machine has gone non idle and at that point uh, there is only one writer thread which can wait for the readers and others add themselves to the wait queue so the first writer what it does is it sets the block bit and uh, then it waits for these all the per cp read counts to go to zero because there are readers in the queue so it has to wait for the count to be zero only then it can enter the critical section in the up path the block bit is cleared and uh, then any waiting contenders are woken up and then the state machine is exited so this is the rcu sync state machine now the why this state machine is required is uh, so the readers are running on the per cp or operating on the per cp counters and they are not aware of any or they are not using any global atomic or global location to see if there are writers so we have to make the presence of writers visible to uh, the readers so it uses two grace periods so first rcu grace period is to make sure that uh, all readers observe all cpus observed that there is a writer which is also waiting for the lock so that that uh, grace period is started so the lighter gray ones show sync enter and the dark ones are sync exits so on the sync enter first sync enter operation a uh, grace period is started to make all the readers go to the slow path where they check for the presence of the writers and once this grace grace period completes uh, the writer starts with its own lock acquire operations and any read any writer which comes or which does a sync enter after the first sync enter that also only waits for the first grace period to complete now okay done uh, writers have registered their presence now when they leave the critical section and uh, we have to make sure that readers fall again go enter into their fast path so that is ensured by the second grace period which is done when the last writer does a sync exit and 
when it does a sync exit it again triggers a grace period and when that grace period second grace period completes at that point the state machine again goes to gp idle and uh, that gp idle state uh, means that readers can enter into this fast path let's say this second grace period is in progress and a writer comes again uh, one of the writers again come and try to acquire the lock in that case the grace period has to be replayed again because uh, to to ensure that the updates from that writer the writer which comes after the second grace period has started they are visible to all the cpus so so here if before the gp idle state is entered again if there is a cpu which comes up uh, then the there is another grace period which has to be started so basically this is how it looks like the state machine looks like so you have a gp idle state and on first sync enter operation there is a state called gp entered which is entered and on a grace period completion the first grace period has completed and sync enter operation can return on the last sync exit we enter into a gp exit state and and once this once we are in this state if there is a uh, if a grace second grace period is exited then the state machine enters into idle if there is a new sync enter while we are in exit state uh, let, this means that there is a new writer then the gp replayed state is entered and we have to wait for one more grace period to complete so this is how a state machine flows now issues with the uh, reader writer semaphore uh, as paul described uh, in this case also we have a contention on a single global uh, reader count or variable which captures the count of all the readers so let's say there are multiple readers running on different cpus if they try to take the read lock they have to increment on the same counter so there is a issue which is seen with kernel fs rwsm where there is a global root kernel fs rwsm and uh, in that case the operations which just try to take the read lock they they actually contend for the same uh, same atomic cache line to be propagated across cpus and there has been multiple approaches which were tried to address this issue so maybe i'm going with the second one first so there's a hashed rwsm where what happens is you have a pool of pool of rwsms and each node in the kernel fs maps to one particular rwsm so basically you distribute your lock contention among a set of rwsm instead of always colliding on the same rwsm but this approach had some limitations uh, that uh, let's say there is a child and parent node so if both of them map to the same hash node or a hash packet rwsm then there were some deadlocks which are seen and traversals showed some deadlocks and other thing is the order in which the lock had to be acquired let's say uh, if you are doing a deleting a node whether the parent rwsm has to be acquired first or the child or so that order required some more investigation and work and uh, this added multi, uh, quite a bit of complexity to the existing code which just took one lock and uh, uh, excluded all the other threads from doing the update operation and another approach was uh, using percp rwsm but uh, the problem here is uh, as we saw percp the per cpu rwsm requires writers to wait for a grace period rcu grace period and that can take order of milliseconds so but in case of this use case there are a uh, quite a bit of writer operations which happen during boot and that that are slowed down because of the rcu grace period so we, this one shows the lock contention on rwsm reader side what we do is we just uh, take uh, one thread of, per cpu so we have 256 cpus here and each thread tries to do a read lock and unlock operation and uh, we see that uh, with uh, with around 256 cpus uh, the there is a linear uh, oh, actually uh, yeah the there is an increase in the time which every any a single operation takes so this is because uh, multiple uh, threads are contending for the same counter or the semaphore so the average time per operation increases linearly with the number of cpus which are added 
now now how to solve this problem so there are few experiments which we tried and the experiments were mostly directed towards how we can reduce the writer overhead of per cpu rwsm so there are very various cases which we have tried uh, one is the base rwsm and then per cpu rwsm then using exp rcu grace period instead of the normal grace period in when writer thread does a sync enter then using the approach where uh, the synchronous rcu callbacks are actually moved to a different set of callback lists so that they are not blocked by other callbacks in the uh, in the single per cpu callback list so there is a optimization which which can be enabled using this uh, parameter then using srcu in place of rcu uh, with both uh, the normal and the exp versions and then using a uh, hazard pointer to do the scan so this shows uh, this is like a relative comparison so because the times are like order of magnet uh, order difference between the base case which is rwsm and uh, per cpu can take order of millisecond so it is like shooting beyond 8000 8, x of the base if we use if we wake up from the gp thread we see some improvement uh and with exp there is much better improvement compared to the normal rcu grace period hazard pointer scanning and uh, srcu exp gives uh, almost similar performance because uh, both of them actually uses a worker k worker based model for scanning and uh, srcu normal actually takes uh, performs better than the other versions but uh, yeah it's still costly Sim similar results are there for the average uh, duration yeah these are the slides i wanted to capture any questions i can take thank you yeah um your reader contention curve is something I'm quite familiar with because I've worked uh, also on the summer read write locks. Okay. And um, I would say that there are two different curves, in fact. There is one uh, when there are only readers and one which is usually much more pronounced when there are occasional writers. Mm. Because in this case, uh, you have to, uh, as you, uh, you explained, you have to cancel the atomic write, uh, the, the fetch add, I mean, to, um, to get back to where the thread was uh, prior to, to testing this. Yeah. And um, what I found is that, uh, a bit like you mentioned, uh, for the, um, the many readers case, uh, pure reader, I would say, uh, it's uh, often sufficient to uh, just uh, do some uh, uh, use an array of locks uh, so you can shard or hash and uh, whatever and for the writer case however uh, what I noticed is that uh, as soon as you start to have uh, more than a few CPUs it's more efficient to just read before writing because yeah. you will avoid uh, the double uh, atomic operation which okay. also uh, puts the cache line in uh, invalid states uh, on all other cores yeah. including the one which is uh, trying to uh, to just complete its job so basically it's a test test and set kind of thing First test no, it no, and no, then no, test no, it. not a test and set because the I test mean, and set uh, test uh, and yes, then test, and test set. first yes <laughs> <laughs> because the test and set is a uh, yeah is just that will invalidate on the other yes exactly yeah absolutely makes sense yeah and another point I don't know if you're interested in uh, um, completing the API to upgrade your locks to uh, switch from read to write if you have some uh, such use case or not okay because um, when i implemented my logs in fact uh, that's what i needed i wanted to uh, it was for lists and for trees i f i faced the situation when where you are uh, looking for an element and then you want to remove it okay. so uh, it's a waste of time to lock the whole tree or list while you are seeking and then uh, just delete the element because nobody else can uh, read in parallel so um, I designed the system so that it is possible to upgrade uh, once you have found your element. 
obviously it's opportunistic. Sometimes you fail and you have yeah. to retry with the right. Uh, but there is also a way to, uh, to go down which guarantees that you will be able to upgrade, but you, there will be a single one which is able to upgrade and in parallel all other ones can read. If you are interested, we can exchange sure. on this. Sure, thank you. Okay. We will discuss. Uh, which hazard pointer implementation did you benchmark with? With the one which Bokun posted, the the one, that okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, we should chat because I, I have an alternative uh, implementation that you might want to try. Sure, thank you. Uh, I have another question, if there are none. Uh, have you looked into um, boosting priorities and proxy execution uh, with uh, reader writer semaphores? Proxy execution? Yes. No, we haven't looked into it. Okay. Yeah. Those are tricky problems. I was okay. kind of curious to hear your input on okay. how, where in those state machines that could maybe be applied. Yeah, maybe we can discuss on the problem statement. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay then, thank you all, thanks.